kick it, Jackie Chan. Oh, Jamar Chase with the dive. You know, Garrett Wilson's wide open. Garrett Wilson, touchdown Barrett. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the video here on the World of Juice channel and welcome back to, uh, I guess now, my reaction for Gerard Mayo getting the head coaching spot of the New England Patriots. I've given it a few days to, to kind of settle itself out, let the reaction and let the, the initial feelings kind of settle and, and I, I had some time to think about it and, and what I really, how I really feel about the direction of the Patriots going forward. So let's get into it and let's talk about it. So a couple of days ago, I had uploaded a video about my reaction for Bill Belichick um, parting ways with the New England Patriots, even though we know that's just, uh, that's, that's just what they call it. They, they fired Bill Belichick. Let's, let's be real. They fired him. They, they weren't, Robert Kraft was never going to bring him back this year. They're just calling it a mutual parting ways because they respect each other. And I respect Bill Belichick. I respect Robert Kraft. So I understand why they, they call it that because that's what I would have called it too. You're not going to come out in the media and say, we fired Bill Belichick. That's just not something you say. But mutually parting ways, agreed to part ways, that's the terminology that you would use. So Bill Belichick is now gone. And as of recording this, I have no idea if Bill Belichick has a job. He doesn't have a job as of recording this video. Um, so I've heard rumors that the Cowboys are going to fire Mike McCarthy after their playoff collapse and their choke to the Packers, which by the way was hilarious to watch, uh, because, uh, one of my friends, you've seen him on the channel before, Brazi, is a, uh, Dallas Cowboy fan, so it was pretty funny to watch the Cowboys, uh, lose that game, uh, and they allowed the Packers to become the first ever team, the first ever seven seed, to win a playoff game in the new format, so that's pretty awesome for the Packers. And it looks like Jordan Love is the new Aaron Rodgers slash Brett Favre. So that's good for Packer fans. But anyway, getting off on, on a, a tangent. Back to what I was talking about. Bill Belichick has not s agreed to coach anywhere else. He's not going to retire. He's, he's going to coach somewhere else. But I've heard rumors that Cowboys are going to fire Mike McCarthy and, and hire Bill Belichick now after that debacle. Uh, I've heard the Falcons are going to be in on him. I've heard uh, a bunch of different things about where Bill Belichick is going to go. So who knows? But like I said, as of recording this, he has not agreed to be the head coach of any team. So I don't know. It could He could have already accepted by the time you watch this and by the time the video goes out. He could have already accepted another job. But as of right now, I don't know where he's at. So now on to the Patriots. I I talked about in the, in the video reacting to Bill Belichick leaving, uh, I talked about how I wasn't sure which direction I wanted to go, whether if I wanted the, the Patriots to go out and hire a guy that had nothing to do with the organization, or if I wanted them to hire from within, and that's exactly what they did. They hire from within. They hire former linebacker Gerard Mayo, who has played his entire career with the Patriots, then retired and became a coach on the coaching staff. To my knowledge, has never been higher than a linebacker coach. I don't think he ever was officially defensive coordinator unless they gave that that title to him as like a co-defensive coordinator. I'm not 100% sure if they actually officially called him that, called him defensive coordinator. But still, he's, he's now officially the youngest coach in NFL history. He took that crown from Sean McVay. I think he's like a month younger than Sean McVay. He's like 37 years old. And now he's the head coach of the New England Patriots. I understand where they are coming from, where Robert Kraft is coming from with this decision. They wasted really no time in hiring Gerard Mayo. They knew exactly who they were going to go for. So I respect Robert Kraft for that, not wasting everybody's time and dragging this out and making it a big pr uh, process. He he knew who he wanted, and he, he hired him. So the only question that I have is, is Gerard Mayo really the guy for this future of this team? Because the state of this team, we have no quarterback. Mac Jones not the guy, even though Mac Jones might have some talent. I'm not saying he doesn't, but he's he's not the guy for this team. Bailey Zappi, obviously not the guy for this team. So we need to get a quarterback, whether that's Caleb Williams or Drake May or Jaden Daniels, whoever it is in the draft, 
one of the three, I don't really care to be honest with you. One of the three needs to be in New England New England next season. So can Gerard Mayo hire the right guys around him to develop a quarterback? We'll have to wait and see. We know that he's pretty good on defense because he's a defensive guy, he's a defensive-minded guy, but that's not really what 2024 NFL football is all about. We've seen defensive coaches fail time over time over time in recent history in the NFL, and offensive-minded coaches really succeed. Look at the best teams in the league, like uh, the 49ers or the the Rams or uh, the, well, I guess Sean McVay's more defensive-minded coach, but like the... Um, the Dolphins and the Chiefs and all that kind of stuff. All those teams succeed because they're offensive-minded head coaches. Now, the one exception you could say is Baltimore with, with John Harbaugh, but that's just because they have a crazy team with Lamar Jackson on offense. So it, they kind of mask maybe John Harbaugh's ineffectiveness on offense because Lamar Jackson's so good. So that's the biggest question I have is, can Gerard Mayo be the guy that either gives up his duties on the offense to like not as a he kind of like gives the the offense to an offensive coordinator whether that's Josh McDaniels or Bill O'Brien or whoever it may be as the offensive coordinator is he going to have the the wherewithal to give up those duties if he doesn't feel confident in himself to be able to run an offense can he give that control up to another person who is a more offensive-minded person, more offensive-minded coach, and let the offense go from there? And then he just focuses on the defense. I am a little bit worried that, and I've seen this talked about from Patriots fans that I follow and that I, I trust with some, some knowledge, that they're worried that this is kind of a bridge head coaching decision, head coaching hiring because they wanted to hire somebody that still feels like the Belichick era because Gerard Mayo is still is technically in the Bill Belichick coaching tree. So Robert Kraft wanted to hire somebody as I don't want to say I don't want to use the word scapegoat, but it's kind of the only word that's coming to, to mind right now because they wanted to have somebody for the players that the players respect, the players trust, the players um, will follow, a voice they will follow who they respect from the Belichick era, they wanted to kind of keep a little bit of that Belichick era within the team, a little bit of that Patriot way. But also, if he ends up failing, then that's a, a nice little transition out of the Belichick era officially onto whatever the next era will be. So I don't personally think that's what's going to happen. I, I have faith that Gerard Mayo is going to be the guy. I was a huge fan of Gerard Mayo when he was a player, by the way. I, I think that he can he can get the job done as long as he does what I said earlier about if he doesn't feel confident building and running an offense and calling offensive plays and stuff, if he if he can have it in him to to put those responsibilities on somebody that he trusts to run the offense, like I said, whether it's Josh McDaniels, Bill O'Brien, or whoever it may be that they hire as offense coordinator, if he lets them do it and they're good at their job and they run the offense with the, whoever the quarterback is and then uh, – they get that done, then that's going to work out. The Patriots are going to be pretty good then because you've got, I think, like $70 million in cap room. You've got a top three draft pick. You've got a lot of good talent on this team. I know we, we suck this year, but there's a lot of different factors that went into that, went into us sucking. But you've got a good team, a good defense. You've got a lot of cap room. You can go out and make some big signings this offseason. We just need to figure out that quarterback spot. And you need to figure out this offensive line. There's been a lot of rotating players on the offensive line, a few injuries, stuff like that. So you got to figure that out, solidify that. Uh, probably bring back Zeke because Zeke had a pretty good season this year as the backup to Ramondre Stevenson, a little bit of rotating in and out and stuff. Both of them played pretty well, but I think Ramondre got hurt towards the end of the year. And Zeke played really well. So I'd like to see Zeke re-signed. And then you need to figure out the receiving core. We've been talking about this since the Brady era. The receiving core is god awful. It's there's no weapons, and maybe that is a little bit of what affected Mac Jones and his development. It probably didn't help, obviously. But you've got Devonte Parker, who is not what he used to be in Miami. He's fine. He's not a number one anymore. Uh, you've got Kayshawn Booty and uh, the other rookie, uh, Pop Douglas, Demario Douglas, who are both decent 
talent young players who I think you can really grow with and really develop. Uh, you just need to give them more opportunities. Uh, I, I would like to see them bring back, um, what's his name, Kendrick Bourne. I'd like to see them bring back Kendrick Bourne because I think he could be a nice player. But you need to get yourself a number one receiver. Neither Kendrick Bourne, no disrespect to those guys, but Kendrick Bourne, Devontae Parker, nobody on this team is a number one receiver. You need to get yourself a bona fide number one receiver for whoever the quarterback is going to be. And then I'd like to see them bring back Gesicki and Mike, and Mike Henry. Um, Hunter Henry. I'd like to see them bring back both Gesicki and Henry because they're both unbelievably solid tight ends. You who you can trust. They're big safety valves, big bodies, big targets. And, and having two tight ends like that on a team with a rookie quarterback, which I'm assuming we have a rookie quarterback at this point, um, that's going to be really good for them to, to check down to and to put some faith in to get some confidence built up for the rookie quarterback to throw to those big body, big targets. So the offense, I don't want to say needs a complete overhaul, but that receiving core needs some help. They are bad. So we need to get an established number one receiver in this offseason. I don't know who that's going to be. I don't know what the receiving uh, free agency class looks like this year. I don't know who some of the big name targets are going to be. But you got a lot of money in cap room, and you need to get at least one receiver that is a number one receiver. Because if you bring back Devontae Parker, Kendrick Bourne, you got the two young guys. I don't know what's going to happen with Tyquan Thornton. He looks like he's going to be bad, but he's talented. He's super fast. He just, I don't know if he can run routes really well. I don't know if he can create separation very well. And that's two of the main things you need for being a receiver. So we'll see what happens with Tyquan Thornton. But, the, I mean, this offense needs some help. This offense was bad. And that could be a lot on play calling, and it could be a lot on Mac Jones, but it's also a lot on that offensive line and that receiving core uh, as well. And then on the defense, I like what the defense has. I mean, you've got Christian Gonzalez, who unfortunately suffered a season and the injury. He was probably going to win Defensive Rookie of the Year if he stayed healthy the entire season. So he's coming back. You've got... A pretty decent de defense because Judon is going to be back healthy, hopefully. Uh, you've got Uche. You've got some pretty solid defensive players. And can, um, you've got, what's his face, the safety. Why am I blanking on his name? Kyle Duggar. I forgot about his name for a second. You've got, you've got some nice young talent on this team on defense. And maybe adding another corner, maybe another defensive lineman to kind of take off the pressure of Matt Judon because Matt Judon gets double teamed a lot because he's the best defensive pass rusher. So maybe adding another defensive pass rusher, getting another corner on the team. And then this defense is pretty much good to go. So I don't know. I, I feel like this team, this rebuild could be over pretty quickly as long as Gerard Mayo makes the right decisions. And that's going to be the biggest question. Can Gerard Mayo make those right decisions? Is he ready for the big spotlight? Is he ready for the big the big head honcho position? Is he ready to be a, a head coach? I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to find out very quickly. Not only this offseason, but we're going to find out um, at the start of next year when he's officially the head coach calling plays. And, and Well, I don't know if he's going to be calling plays, but when he's on the sideline as the head coach and all the decisions go through him. So we're going to find out if he's ready for it. I hope that he is. We're going to find out, though. But this team, they've got a lot of money in cap room. They've got a top three draft pick. This rebuild, if, if it's done correctly, can be over within a season or two. And we can be right back to where we were with the Brady era, going to AFC title games, going to Super Bowls, being a playoff contender every single year, dominating the AFC East. We can be right back there very quickly if, it, if the right decisions are made. And I know a lot of teams can say that, but... I, I do believe that with the Patriots, with the structure they built, with the culture they built, the Patriot way, I, I do believe that they can be back very, very quickly. So those are my thoughts on Gerard Mayo uh, being the head coach of the New England Patriots and what I feel like the direction of this team is going in. Uh, I do want to mention one thing. I mentioned this in the Belichick video. I will be most likely going live during the NFL draft, the first round of the NFL draft. Uh, so if you want to stop by and hang out and react with me while the Patriots possibly find their new franchise quarterback with the number three pick feel free because i'll be i'll be live streaming the nfl draft uh, i don't know what day it is officially i think it's it's usually late march early april i would assume very early april like the first week of april is usually when it is but we'll find out we will find out 
Uh, and then I will be going live on day one, on night one of the draft. And we will be seeing who's going to be the franchise quarterback of the New England Patriots. Because that's got to be where you go. You can't go into this new era with Mac Jones. You just can't do it. He's, his legacy has been tainted. His his reputation has been tainted. You can't, if he, maybe he's the backup and you get rid of Bailey Zappi, but you can't have Mac Jones be the starter. That's just not going to be the case. So we're going to find out. It's exciting. I, I, in my lifetime, I've never gone through this as a Patriots fan because when I was born, Bill Belichick took the job like six months later or whatever. So my entire existence on planet earth bill belichick has been the head coach of the new england patriots so having a new head coach is exciting that's never happened for me in nfl and then tom brady has been the quarterback of my team up until 2020 and then this post tom brady era hasn't been great <laughs> but maybe this new era can be just as exciting so these are new territories we're entering here, as, as at least for me, as a Patriots fan. So I'm excited. I can't wait to see what happens. I hope they don't blow it. But that's going to do it for me for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Join the Juice Club. Thank you so much. Stop by and watch. I truly appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.